welcome once again to Nineworks TV. Now I'm on my way to Charade Accident Repair, one of only a handful of Porsche recommended body repairers in the UK. I'm on my way there to get my Porsche fried eggs fix. It's nothing to do with this 996 or indeed any 911 for that matter. This car is altogether more special and it concerns three R's. Rothmans, race car and road legal. Best get up the road and take a look. Race ready yet road legal, this is a Boxster with a difference. Before we drive it though, let's get the full story on this Rothmans 986 and its Pink Pig sister car from driver Steve Shaw. Steve, thanks for having us back at Charade today. More Boxsters. Yep, more Boxsters. This is your race car. My car, my baby. This is your friend's car, but one that you were heavily involved with yes. in terms of the painting. So the whole reason you got a seat in the box there a few years ago was for a resto racing competition. Yeah, so a few years ago when uh, Boxster was 20 years old, Porsche GB came up with the idea of, of creating a resto racing race series, um, which we race in conjunction with uh, the, the Porsche Club. It's funny because it's a detailed paint job and it is paint, it's, yeah. not, it's not decals. Yeah. The process to do this, as you were explaining off camera, is quite involved. I mean, most people would have probably just painted it and then put the decals over the top yeah. and, and been done with it. But when the car, when the first competition was done, it was there was like a competition for the best restoration job as well from a paintwork perspective and, and preparation of the car. So we wanted to make sure that it was as good as it could be. So we um, uh, painted and lacquered the car, then it was flatted down, then all the decals were applied then it was lacquered again and flatted. Now I wanted to make sure that when you felt across it, you couldn't feel any difference or raise from where the vinyl yeah, stickers nice was. Smooth. So that each panel has roughly three coats of lacquer on it, um, which on a normal car is, is fine. But we soon realise on a race car, when you get dents and bits and pieces, um, <laughs> it's probably not the best thing to do. But from my perspective of showing what we do as a business, I, I was really proud to obviously achieve that with with obviously that one and then secondly when we did our own car. So what's the story with the Rothmans car then? Was that done at the same time as this? Or? No, I mean, se season one, we supported uh, Porsche Centre Wolverhampton. And again, as, as a fan of Porsche and motorsport myself, we followed them around the various circuits. And at the end of season one, we had the awards ceremony at the end. That Porsche actually said, look, we're looking for more drivers. And I was sort of egged on by a few of the other the drivers and said, um, <laughs> Yeah, you, you should do it, it's great fun. Had you done racing at this point, Steve? Never, never raced before, yeah, yeah, never yeah. raced before. But then again, it was only with talking with the team at, at Porsche GB, it was actually James Toy who said, look, I'd, I'd really love to see a, um, a Rothmans car. And I said, right, let's, we're, we're gonna do it. So again, loads of time thinking about how it was gonna work on the car. And on generation one of the car, we actually continued the, the white into the front bumper. Uh, okay, um, yeah. But I get through that many bumpers. Um, we've, we've just gone for, for straight blue now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that, that's why we went for the, the Rothmans colours. The original colours, it's a flat blue. And I wanted something to stand out a bit. So it was only when we was looking at the, the, the colour palettes that we'd actually got a Rolls Royce in the shop at the time in, in this particular blue. <laughs> and right. because of how the sun um, sparkled on it, yeah. I thought that's, that's the blue we're having. Yeah. So basically that's a Rolls Royce blue, uh, Porsche white, and uh, obviously guards red and I don't know what the gold is but like I say with this one this, this car was completely stripped so the underneath is pink all the wheel arches <laughs> as well as the inside um, that that one we really went to town on yeah obviously with with this car uh, we kept the this the donor car for this was was arctic silver okay so we've kept the interior silver um, just basically to keep the cost down really because yeah. it, it's not a, um, a glory pageant competition anymore although yeah. it, it has to look nice from the outside it doesn't really matter what colour yeah. the inside is. Well, yeah. we're very fond, particularly of the Nineworks sticker. Yep, um, on that's the car. a new, new addition. We'll be following your exploits for next season, mm. which you can see on Nineworks. So come then, Steve. What's it been like racing in uh, in the Boxer Championship? It, it's it's been an incredible experience. I'm in my second full 
the season now. Last season, we just had a few races, obviously, because of COVID and lockdown and everything. Yeah. Um, so really, it was just a case of getting a bit more practice in. But second full season, I, I think back to my first season when I was sat on that grid at, Brand at uh, Donington was my first race. And all the cars shoot off. It is so scary. <laughs> um, but you know what? There is nothing like it. Um, you have to condition you. I mean, fair play to the Formula One drivers and, and people who do motorsport to a, to a higher sort of level because how you have to think and condition yourself. It, it's been great for me because I've, I've pushed myself further and I've, I've probably pushed myself. But mentally and physically, when you're behind the wheel, you're thinking of obviously your next turn, what gear, your braking point. There's so much to learn. It's not just a case of sitting behind a car and, yeah, and as, yeah. as you know yourself, just driving a car. You have to think more and more about what you're doing. But yeah, great tracks. First time I've ever driven around Silverstone. And to be on that track that only a few weeks earlier, uh, the Formula One was on, it was just fantastic. The idea is it was to get people interested in motorsport um, and a way of uh, the first step in, if you like. Yeah. A few of the drivers from previous seasons have gone up into class two, uh, which is obviously a lot more uh, investment into suspension, engine setup, tyres. Yeah. But whereas for us, it's the, every car is identical. So the idea was it, was it had to be between 2002 and 2004. All had to be um, Boxster S's and obviously all have to be manual. So these cars are road legal? Yeah, everything has to work, lights have to work, yeah. ev everything works, so you can drive it on the road. Yeah, you're kind enough and probably mad enough as well to let us have a bit of a go on the road. Yeah. So. Well, let's face it, you probably can't do any more damage to <laughs> it. <so>. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, Steve, I'll give it my best shot. So. Okay, go and have a bit of fun. Not your average day at the office, this one. I think for any Porsche enthusiast, the whole idea of being able to drive a race car, a Rothmans livery race car, no less, it's the stuff of dreams, isn't it? Now, admittedly, for most people, that Rothmans livery Porsche race car tends to be a 956 or a 962. But I'm very happy to be driving this 986. Uh, the stock of the 986 has risen quite spectacularly in recent times. No doubt helped, of course, by race series such as the one that this competes in, which is the Box the Cup. Part of the Porsche Club Motorsport Programme, it runs in Porsche Club Championship in Class 3. And really, I mean, it absolutely is the gateway to racing at grassroots level, of course. And the cost of racing tends to be absolutely monumental. It will cost you six figures alone just to buy a genuine Carrera Cup car. That's before you've spent any money on the race team, travel, tyres, registration, fuel, accident damage and the like. It's serious, serious money, but with this, the costs are a lot more entry level. 600 quid registration for the season, around about 600 quid uh, per race meeting. There are seven in the Box the Cup. Only two sets of tyres for the season. In terms of racing, this really is just about as wallet friendly as it gets. Now the whole premise of the Box the Cup again is to entice beginners into the motorsport pyramid, which as we know at Porsche goes up a hell of a long way, right to the top with the works drivers competing at the likes of Daytona. As a driver, all you need to compete in the Box the Cup is a race license up to national standard. And as for the cars, well, believe it or not, and it's the whole reason I'm able to drive this race car on the road, is to all intents and purposes, this is a standard road spec 986 Boxster. All componentry has to be stock, so that's engine, transmission, including ratios, brakes, the whole thing has to be exactly as the car left the factory. Requirements that you do need, obviously, to go racing, the roll cage, uh, it goes up to the bulkhead, it does not go through the bulkhead for class three. You need an FIA spec seat, you need an FIA spec crash hat for yourself, of course. You have to race with the hard top and the hard top must have the glass screen. Otherwise, it's just suspension is the big tweak. All boxers competing in class three have to use JRZ coilovers. Otherwise, GT3 front anti-roll bar and GT3 lower arms, which essentially gives you a little bit more adjustability. And already, I mean, we've barely got out of town here in Steve's Boxster, but already you can feel that the geo on this is fairly aggressive. That is it. I mean, that is literally it. Everything else has to be as it left the factory. I mean, from a spectator's point of view, it's pretty awesome to see 
all of these old liveries, iconic liveries from Porsche past, all congregating on one racetrack for seven weekends a year, just adds to the appeal of the Box the Cup. I'm actually really surprised by just how punchy that 3.2 litre flat six is. Really nice power delivery, but feels particularly strong at the top end. You can only imagine how much fun this would be competing in the car as part of the Box the Cup. I think regardless of the racing, what this does is put the 986 firmly back on the radar for enthusiasts. I mean, as, as a road proposition, it's so much car for the money. And in race car, it's just even more dialed in. I think this exercise has proven two things. The first is, well, just how accessible the box the cup really is, as affordable as it gets. But I think more than that, it also shows just what an incredible platform the 986 Boxster really is, because, I mean, look at it. It looks awesome. It drives amazingly as well. And as I say, it's no great trickery here. It's a standard 986 Boxster, now a quarter of a century old, with a decent set of aftermarket coilovers on. And that brings me back to what I said earlier in the video, and that's that the stock of the 986 Boxster has risen substantially, particularly in the past couple of years, as more and more enthusiasts wake up to the value and moreover the potential of this car. Very fitting then that this has all happened in time for the car's 25th anniversary. It's already a modern classic of real merit and as a road or race car, the Boxster has shown itself to be brilliantly capable, delivering an outstanding amount of fun for the money. It's already got Steve hooked on racing and genius initiatives like the Boxster Cup will only help accelerate the car's wider popularity among enthusiasts. I'm all for it.